This is the preview of the all-new Mercedes C-Class Convertible, an auto your number one resort for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We also have a video on the C43 Convertible, the powerful one. That one will also be linked in the video description. This video here is about, you know, the non-AMG version, as I always call it. You can also see it here in the front. This just says plain C-Class Cabriolet. But here we're going to talk about the basic differences from sedan, coupe and the convertible because basically you can imagine that this one here is a C coupe without the top on it. Um, because some basic difference, for example, like the attaching of the side mirror, which was usually like in this triangle. But here it's also at the door, sportier style. This one, for example, also accounts for the convertible. Engines here below will have 150 until 360 horsepower than in the C43 convertible so far. And later on there will surely be, I guess, also a C63 and then with even more horsepower. You can also see the alloys here at the other, the C43. Those ones look a little bit more dramatic. Those ones here a little bit more conservative, but still they're already quite huge. And we can always search for the R number and says R19, so 19 inch here for the rims. But you know, the styling though, don't make them appear so huge. What I find one of the most beautiful things about this car here, to me, a very good automotive design is just with one or two design lines. And the same is happening right here. First of all, in the front, we have this diamond structure here in the front grille and rather central line of the headlights presented here, the LED headlights, which are for this car here optional and cost a lot of money. And then, this is very interesting, you can see, this one very defining design line, the dropping line, begins right here and then goes all the way across the vehicle on the height of the door handles, divides here in light and shadow, light and shadow, and is caught by the taillights. And this is also the basic difference to the C-Class sedan, that the coupe and convertible versions all have this very horizontal taillights. And if you come around, you can see it right here, that they are stretched all the way. And I've told you earlier in one of our reviews that I don't like the taillights of the C-Class sedan. They look to me a little bit clumsy. But here with a coupe, as I've already told you, and also with the convertible, they look very beautiful. And still, you know, nowadays we see a lot of contemporary designs, which I know up to date, but are mixed with a lot of different structures and form. And, and here, I think, they really said, okay, we want to keep it rather simple, and I think, therefore, it is really very beautiful. This one is a C22D, so a small diesel with formatic, with all-wheel drive, and so you see, this is also possible to put a small diesel in the convertible. I would probably go with a petrol engine, with a classic one, but I mean, it doesn't have to be the biggest one. My favorite would probably be the C400 and then with Airmatic because Airmatic, the air suspension, is also available here for the convertible. We drove the C400 Coupe with Airmatic and that was a phenomenal ride. You can check that, well, that review as well, search for it, or it's also be linked in the video description. What is also very interesting are those wind features we have here in the C-Class convertible. And um, first of all, we have normal wind deflector that can be drawn up here electronically, will be like this then here. And you can see you can also flip the seats and then have a connection to the trunk here in the rear. That's also, also interesting. We can already see here that the seat styling here is... Oh, Ah, the seat belt is locked in them. That the seat styling here is um, microfiber on the inside, and I'm not quite sure if it's. Uh, but my most case with Mercedes that you had the article, the leather red on the outside, and then the microfiber on the inside. And I would definitely go for this setup because you know it adds beauty and comfort at the same time. What is very interesting that we know that from the E-Class convertible, formerly. This is so-called air cap, and that is also available here. It's not fixed here in that one as far as I see, but this air cap adds some kind of deflector in the front right here. And that kind of creates 
a warm cabin because the air is then directed over your head. And it's a very interesting feature which was first introduced in the E-Class convertible. And I'm really looking forward to drive that one right here. And um, what is very interesting as well, and that one we have already included, and if you move around back me again, look from the back here in the head restraint, it's not only with the air cap, but also with the so-called air scarf. By the way, you know, I'm not a fan of those marketing words, but air scarf is really a cool word I mentioned. You see here are the vents in the um, head restraint. They, they rotate. And then at the front, I get some very warm airstream at my neck and... Um, you know, it's also available in the SL or the new SLC, which was formerly the SLK. And so together with this air scarf and the air cap, and of course seat heating, which we have right here. See, this is here the key for the seat heating. Very great quality, brushed aluminum. I really like that style here. And here, this is done for the air scarf. It's not turned on right now here. Together with this system, this command will be surely be available for open top driving all season long and that's also a main difference to very sporty convertibles thinking of an SLC or let's say Master MX-5 um, you know plain Roadster or Audi TT um, oh this one here is I guess some Chinese action checking out the underfloor of the car we quite often see this with motor shows by the way also you see a um, lot of um, Chinese people running around with some um, notebooks and marking some numbers on it. Very interesting and well we see it for a lot of years now and I thought that is maybe meanwhile over but obviously it still continues. Very funny thing. Well, we concentrate on the interior and what I find remarkable is that we got the seat control on the lower part here. Usually it would be like on the inside of the doors I expected. Not sure why it has moved right here now. I can move more to the front with the seat spell. Well maybe it's well, well it's it doesn't seem to be working here right now, but... Ah, there it is, because it's split. Manual split, so front and back is manual. That's strange, and the electric control is then split for the... for the rear. I'm not sure what they thought about that one. Um, you can also lengthen the seating area here, and it's very comfortable on the seat on this house. microfiber on the inside. And so again, well, you got quite nice view all around here and you already feel you can really relax in this car and so I would meanwhile I think prefer such a convertible here over a top sports convertible because you buy such a car to enjoy nature to go on very nice relaxing cruise rides and there you not necessarily need the sportiest car overall by the way not sure if you've seen it here so far on the interior we also got wood, so there's not only aluminum available, but also wood. And that is very nice here because this one here is a matte wood. N the fingerprints are not put on that one. It's not shiny and has a very natural feeling. So definitely very nice. And you know, in contrast to, um, you know, to killing animals, wood can of course be also grown sustainable. Well, oh, always getting electric shocks when I'm <laughs> touching the outside of the car. So a very nice setup as it is here right now. Also that the um, grey Alcantara on the inside is fitting to the exterior here of the car. And I think already I can tell you so far that this is one of, well, it's not a very revolutionary car, but definitely one of my favorite cars here from the Geneva Motor Show because it kind of fits my riding style and it fits the auto fuel, the car feeling. Now let's dig deeper into the subject here even more with an expert on the C-Class convertible. And with Christian Frü, chief engineer for the C-Class convertible and also for the Coupé, we're going to talk about the changes that have been done for the convertible especially and maybe some technical things we don't see at first sight. So first of all, as this one here has the open top, what have you changed for example with the chassis? Yeah, the first thing you have to do is to have a, make a viable structure that you can put on a car that handles quite well and it is stiff enough to, to keep the structure for a convertible. What we did is reinforced especially the sill area which is down here. We have reinforcements in the A-pillar of course to make it a solid structure also in crash situations 
and we put a lot of additional steel, so to say, in the back of the bottom to have a structure, structural ring at the bottom that makes the car really stiff. In addition to that, we have uh, reinforcements under the body. Um, Streben. Yeah, additional the, pillars that um, pillars yeah. that uh, reinforce the underbody of the car. And with that, we achieve a stiffness of around 30 hertz on the torsion, torsional stiffness. So those measurements, do they also affect the weight? And could you save the weight at some other points then? Um, actually, no. There's no way to save the weight on other points. Uh, that's normal for cabriolets that the structure gives an additional weight of around 70 to 80 kilos. What about the rear? And um, we had one question already in the preview about the overall bars. Where do they exactly pop out and um, how have you designed that one for the, the safety? overall bars pop out here. You have this little uh, sign here, safety roll bar. And we have two pyrotechnical roll bars that pop out behind the, the back uh, headrests. One is here, one is on the other side. They will just go through here. You have this, um, the decision was here for a soft top. Um, has this something to do with the segment? Because you know, Mercedes is also very famous you know, with the SLK or now SLC for a very good hard top structure as well. So why did you go for the soft top here? The soft top overall is the best solution for a four seater. On a two seater, it folds quite easily in the back, but the, uh, a large soft top like that, it will eat the whole trunk space. And soft tops in the meantime have developed quite well. So in acoustical performance, they are at the same level as a hard top. Uh, you can go through the washing uh, with a soft top. And also all the, all the questions of being uh, uh, dicht. Yeah, durable uh, and, and nothing rinses through. Uh, wind noise or, or water leaks is no more an issue with a soft top. And with this package, you still have a trunk left that you can use. We can, we can take a look at it. Yeah. But, um, uh, but you have to use the key, right? There's no key in him. I was wondering that in yeah, a few, uh, few models. You can open it from the front. You can open it via your key. And if you have a keyless access, we have a hands-free access, you can open it with your foot. Okay. So, um, and then we can fold up that one when the uh, roof is um, when the roof is closed. closed yeah. Then we can fold up this one, and it offers you a trunk space of 360 liters. On top of that, we can fold the rear backrests completely flat. I can show you later. Yeah, that has to be um, activated from the driver's seat, then. It has to be activated from the. No, it has to be activated. Oh, from from, from, from the trunk. Let's see. Activated here from the trunk. There's two little switches. Like ah, this. there it is. And you can fold them down both sides, obviously. And you have a big hole here where you can store your skis or your snowboard. So that makes it a usable car for all year. 366 days this year. Yeah, we've also talked about the air cap, the air scarf. That is right. in the combination you know, to have an all-season convertible then. That's right. So it was a little bit overtaken then, especially the egg from the, from the former E-Class convertible then. Yeah, actually that's one Mercedes bespoke technology that we use and I think no other competitor has that. Um, it consists of two, two, oh sorry, two features. A lot of guys here. Sorry. <laughs> two features. One is uh, the... The wind, deflector. The, wind, the wind deflector in the back that will come out automatically and the other one seat right in the front a spoiler that is quite well integrated here it'll come up at an angle like this I can show you later and that deflects the airstream over the car and brings and uh, keeps uh, the airflow from going back here so you will have quite quiet area in the front and a much quieter wind area in the back. Is it included here because you, you can't see anything? Is it, it's it, it included, I will show you. That's really interesting because I thought this is a version that does not have this particular feature so it's very well hidden. So <laughs> now it's about this air cap feature. 
turning on the ignition. Switch here. You can activate it. You can see how it comes up here. And how the deflector in the back is rising. And that's the way it's... Well, it's really well hidden here in the front. Oh, no. It's here in this uh, cabriolet switch part where you can have the all windows switch. You can activate or you can control the convertible to soft top and also the air deflector. Oh, so this um, button here has been especially designed for the yeah, convertible it's here. It's only in the convertible. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think we have some time to close the roof now. I guess no one's here that could be heard right now. Let's see, because it's always very important how the convertible looks closed. And we can also do it from the outer with the key, for example, and um, just hold down the button. How many seconds is it? 20 seconds, below 20 seconds. Let's see, maybe ignition. Maybe it's because we have a special setup here. It's uh, uh, switched to a yeah, demo, a demo mode, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mode. That's sometimes done to prevent any damage from happening because when everyone would be sitting down and all the time going front and back, then it might be, it may be not be working. So, well, maybe we can, oh, there it is, turning on the engine. He's allowed to do that. There it is, <laughs> ta-da. So, looking forward now to the folding system. There it is, the soft top. And the coupe, of course, is so special because it has this coupe style line. Let's see now how the convertible looks like. And you see the coupe line is rather remained, I must say. I want to hear your comments, how you I like that one closed. It's as much remained as possible with the convertible to give the rear space to the, to the passengers. And I think it still looks very coupe shaped. Not as much as the coupe, of course, but it's still a sporty look. Um, and it's a beauty also closed, but it's more beautiful, obviously, open. <laughs> yes, definitely. As an engineer, you also know a lot about the engines. We can take a look in here. And um, it's sometimes quite uncommon to combine a diesel engine then with a convertible, which you have obviously done here. Yes, but we had a good experience also in the past. We offered uh, diesel engines also in the E-Class convertible. That worked? It works, especially for the German market. Yeah, of course, in the US it's not an option. They don't, are not interested in diesels. It works quite well, and the comfort and the NVH behavior of diesel has improved very much. That's also one of the benefits when you have a, a very stiff structure. Then you can decouple the engine more than you can with a soft structure. So we have a four-cylinder diesel here. Um, it consumes as low as 4.5 liters in the new European driving cycle, 116 grams. We offer this one, as you can see here, also as a 4x4. And we have in total four, no, five 4x4 four four options. So that makes it a true all-year driven car. You can go in snow, you can go everywhere. So to conclude our small tour here, what is your most favorite feature on the new C-Class convertible? My most favorite feature truly is the air cap because that makes the car drivable all year long. If you combine it especially with the air cap, the heated air that comes out of the headrest, it's a perfect car in all conditions and it's just fun to drive. And it most seems like that we have to test this very vehicle probably next winter to prove this point or not. Yeah, we're looking, forward, <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Thank you very much for your time as well. Thank you. Thank you also very much for your time. And check out more Geneva Motor Show episodes. They are linked in the playlist below. And we'll continue our tour here. Thank you very much for watching.